Hello everyone, this is Justin Mutlak from StellarMate. In Case SARS 361, we introduced a new feature called the Optical Trains. This feature should make dealing with your equipment a bit more intuitive. If you edit your equipment profile, you will notice that the primary and guide scope selections are now gone. They have been moved to the Optical Trains Manager. Let's go ahead and start our equipment profile. You'll be presented with this optical trains table. And so let's go over this and select our equipment. For reference, let's look at the setup in my observatory right now. So as you can see, this is my primary uh, uh, scope. My primary imaging train is right here. I have several mounts and scopes in the observatory. So the primary optical train is the one you probably designate using your primary camera and your primary scope. And the secondary train, and these can be named anything, uh, but primary and secondary would probably make it easier to remember. So if you have a separate guide scope, you would have uh, a secondary optical train. Uh, for this small refractor here, with a, this is a Nikon DSLR attached to it, this would be this would constitute a single optical train. Same thing here with the Salazone evolution mount. This would be a single optical train. And so the optical train just asks us what kind of equipment, devices, or elements that exist in this optical train. And this is just to make our astrophotography session easier and um, much more versatile than it was before. So let's go back and let's select the optical trains. So for the primary train, we're using EQ mode mount. Uh, we have the dust cap selected and we have the light box selected. And these are the same device, but they serve two different functions, two separate functions. One is a dust cap, which is a cover, and one provides uh, LED light for the flat field capture. Uh, next, this is where the a telescope or DSR lens selection. So DSR lens, this is a new feature in in this version of uh, K-Stars, which allows you to add DSR lenses uh, since some users uh, use them to um, you know image the night sky. And um, once added here, then you can select them from the drop down here. So let's select our primary scope, which is this Orion Eon scope, and um, Let's continue on the primary scope. We don't have any reducers. We have a rotator, which is the night crawler. We have a focuser. Uh, it's the same device. For the filter wheel, we're using the QHI filter wheel. Uh, for the primary camera, let's correct that. So our primary camera is the QHI 268M. For the guider here, if we have OAG, we would use a guider. So the guider is the device that receives or generates the guide correction pulses. So since we have a guide scope on the secondary train, then here we will just not select anything. All right, now let's go to the secondary train. We're using the same mount. And this is will become more important in the future as ECOS would be able to support multi, multiple captures simultaneously using multiple optical trains. This is not supported now, but this architecture paves the way to support this. All right, so dust cap, we don't have any dust cap here. We don't have any light box. On, in our optical path, we don't have anything here. Just as a reminder, if we go here for the guide scope, you know, the optical elements is just, it's it's on the same mount. Uh, there is a guide scope available and there is a guide camera. And that's it, there's nothing else going on here. And And this is important actually as well because uh, let's say you capture a dark frame. If you capture a dark frame for your primary train, then it would automatically know there is a dust cap and it would you know, uh, close the dust cap and then capture a dark frame. Uh, on the other hand, if you capture a dark frame on your secondary train, then it knows there is no dust cap here and then it would ask you, please you know, go to the uh, guide scope and cover it manually in order to take uh, a dark frame. And so this is useful. And before that, the, the, the ECOS capture module was confused and it would sometimes 
you know, shut down or close the, the, the dust cap when it's not needed. Now it's very clear. All right, let's select the scope. So Orion guide scope, no reducer, and then the rest we just reset because we have nothing here. For the camera, we select the guide star, and then EQ mod would be receiving the correction pulses. So we just leave that here. And that's it, we're set. If you go to the capture module now, instead of uh, selecting a camera, you will just select the train. If you hover, you can see like which camera and which telescope. This is just uh, to help you remember which train this is. Um, the same thing if you go to, um, for your focus on other modulus, it's been implemented in all modulus. And here you can change the settings. So the settings are say per train. So let's say, uh, you know, we select like auto star here. We go to our secondary train. Let's say we select full field. Let's now switch there. So there we go. It remembers the settings here. We go to the secondary. It remembers the settings now. It's immediate. You don't need to save anything. It's now very easy. And yep, that's pretty much it. If you go to the mount here modular, you would see, you know, which scope is, is, is selected. Again, all the scopes uh, savings is uh, like uh, focal length. This you no longer need to edit directly. You only need to do it from one place. Uh, if we go to the guide module, for example, here you could see that we have the secondary train selected, and then you know our our scope and lens info are already loaded and good to go. So that's pretty much it. I hope you will find this feature useful, and as I said, it paves the way for uh, more complex operations that should come in ECOS in the future. Uh, clear skies and take care.